how to draw. Today we're going to look at the basics of making a charcoal drawing for beginners. Welcome back to my channel. If we have not met before, my name is Michelle and on this channel we talk about all things watercolour as well as some mixed media, even some business and motivation for artists too. Please do consider subscribing. If you click the bell icon, you'll get notified every time I have a new video for you. Make at least one free video a week here on YouTube with extra content for Patreon subscribers. So in this video, we're going to go through all the things you need to know about using charcoal. I'll be actually making a portrait in charcoal and I'm going to be using as well a little bit of white Conte. I'll explain what that is if you don't know. And I'm going to be working on some toned paper as well. We'll go through how to transfer your drawing, how to do your drawing, the best tools for drawing. Also how to blend all of the techniques you need to produce a really lovely charcoal drawing. So let's get started. So first let's look at the materials I'll be using to draw with today. So let's go through the basic materials. I will be using some blending tools later on as well and I'll go through those when I get to the blending section of the video but let's just start with the absolute basics. So paper. I'm actually going to be working on pastel paper here. If you're a beginner and you just want to do a ton of practice then sugar paper is a really great thing to do. You can just use, I mean, I'm going to be using coloured paper today, but you can actually just use white cartridge paper. Um, if you're not in the UK, cartridge paper is what we call very high quality sketch pad paper. So you can just use sketch pad paper and just use a stick of charcoal. It can be as basic and as simple and as incredibly cheap as that. I'm going to use this pastel paper. Now, not all pastel papers are suitable for charcoal. Some of them can be a little bit too textured. So I'm going to have a play with this one here. And I've got some sticks of charcoal here. I've also got uh, a little tin that I keep them in just to keep the rest of my art materials clean. I've got all sorts of sizes in here. So let's just grab a little stick of charcoal and uh, let's have a look at how it applies. Now you see this is the correct side of the pastel paper and although this is fine and we can smudge it in, it is rather textured, so I'm actually going to use the reverse. I'm going to fold it because I don't want to get this onto the uh, onto the area where I'm working. Let's fold that out of the way. And I'm going to use the other side, and you'll see that it just blends a little bit more smoothly. So you can use pastel papers, but just take care that you're not using one that's too heavily textured because you may find it hard to get a, a smooth blend with it. Now, one of the advantages of charcoal is it doesn't shine like graphite pencil, so you can get some real strong darks with it. So I've got various pastel papers here. This is the one that I'll be using today. What is this? This is uh, Windsor & Newton pastel a paper pad tints. As I said, I'm using the reverse of a sheet. I've got this other one here, um, some Ingres. I've actually been left a load of, um, uh, it sounds like he died, but it's, uh, he didn't die. It was a friend of mine who went to France who left me a load of, um, a load of drawing pads because he mostly works digitally now. now. I've got this one here, this is quite a cheap one. This is just um, literally some sugar paper, which does fade, but as I said, if you're a beginner, it can be a great choice. So onto the charcoal itself, we have just got sticks of charcoal here. These come in all different sizes. After that, you get charcoal pencils. Just like ordinary pencils, these come in a variety of hardnesses. Is hardnesses a word? I'm not sure. But they actually give a bit more of a firm line. They're not as easy to blend, but you can get some really good details with them. You can sharpen them with an ordinary pencil sharpener. If you want to maintain a really fine point, you can use a piece of uh, very fine sand paper or glass paper to just resharpen that point when you need to without keeping on you know going back to your pencil sharpener and losing a load of the lead by lead I mean compressed charcoal obviously it's not lead another thing that I'm going to be using today is some white Conte so if you haven't used Conte you can usually recognize them because they're square they look like this really what Conte is is a hard soft pastel that makes no sense I know so you get oil pastels and then you get soft pastels which are extremely chalky and crumbly and then you get these which are a hardened type of soft pastel so they're not made of oil or wax they are chalk but they're stronger and more compressed and so again we can get fine details with them and we can add white now if I were working on some white cartridge or sketch paper with my black charcoal I wouldn't need this but as I'm working on a paper that's already tinted in order to get some whites in there and some light areas I'm going to need one of these you can also of course mix this in with your charcoal and get some lovely opaque effects 
in addition I've got my source photo here and I've also printed one out on very cheap printer paper and I've put my grid on it I'm not going to be explaining the grid system here but I do have a full video on it which I'll link to at the end and we'll talk more about transferring our drawing in a moment lastly I have a couple of practical things to help me I have some paper towel here this is going to help me if I need to lean on my work because you can end up with all of the charcoal just living on your arm instead of living on the paper I've also got a rag which um, it's just a bit of an old cut up t-shirt which I've uh, put some water on which will enable me to keep my hands clean you can of course use baby wipes but they're incredibly bad for the environment and I don't like getting all those strange chemicals on my skin anyway much rather just use some water here and know that I'm not going to transfer anything strange to my paper so we're going to look now at the best tools for drawing. You might think you would start your charcoal drawing with pencil, but that's not the best way to go at all. I'm actually going to be working from a traced drawing this time. Now, some of you will be saying, but Michelle, I watch you all the time. You're always telling us not to trace. Now, I'm not tracing the photograph. I'm actually tracing a drawing that I've already done because I'm actually completing this same portrait as a watercolor tutorial for Patreon. That one will also be released in due course as a mini course if you're interested in that. And if it's been um, a couple of months since this video went up, then you can pop over to my Instagram if you'd like to see what the result of the painting was. Now, the original drawing I actually made using the grid technique. I'm going to link to that video at the end of this one, but I'll also explain more about that as we get started on the drawing. So let's talk about drawing. Now, why don't I advise using a graphite pencil as your charcoal underdrawing? The simple fact is it will show at the end. It's nearly always important to do your underdrawing, unless you're doing something like watercolor. It's important to do your underdrawing with the medium that you're working in. The same goes for soft pastels. And on this channel, I advocate for as much drawing by eye practice as you can possibly do. If you can't draw by eye, I then I suggest you use the grid method because tracing won't improve your drawing and painting skills. So I've actually drawn this one. So this isn't a tracing of the uh, of the face. This is my drawing on a watercolor board and I'll be completing this painting on Patreon and as a mini course. So I've already drawn it once. And that's really actually a quite a good tip. If you have already drawn your picture, you know, or if you find that you just spend so long drawing and so long getting it right, you want to practice your drawing, but that you just find that you really make a mess on your paper, then draw it on a separate piece of paper first and then trace it across afterwards. So tracing as a method, there's nothing wrong with it, but as I said, it won't help you to practice your drawing skills and it certainly won't help you to improve your drawing skills. It won't help with improving your manual dexterity and it won't help with improving your art skills. But there's nothing to stop you drawing first somewhere else and then tracing your design across. And because I've already drawn this once, then I'm going to trace my design across. Now, how am I going to actually get this onto my paper? If I'm not going to use graphite pencil, I can't even use something like trace down paper because that has graphite on the back. So what am I going to do about getting this across onto my pastel paper? I've got a really clever trick for doing that next. So as I said, if you're drawing by eye, you want to go straight in with your charcoal or charcoal pencil. Or if you're working on something like a dark or a black paper, you can go straight in with your white Conte so that those initial lines will just blend into your finished drawing. However, I'm transferring across. Now I've got a little hack for doing this and that is to use dressmaker's carbon paper. So I've got this paper here and this has white carbon on the back. Now a scientist will tell you that carbon is not exactly the same as charcoal or chalk, but it's close enough. And so I'm going to place this carbon paper underneath. So this carbon paper is made by Birda and it's meant for transferring dressmaking markings across things like darts or so sewing is one of my hobbies but it will also transfer some very gentle marks across onto your paper and I'm going to press quite hard here and that's because I'm not on particularly dark paper so these lines are only just going to show up but it's going to be enough for me that I can get that initial drawing transferred this carbon paper does come in other colors as well. And I'm just going to transfer across. And then if I need to, I'll go over it a little bit in my charcoal pencil if I'm worried that it's not gonna show up enough to hold for the longevity of the drawing. And we're just going to keep pressing like this and transferring the marks across. I've pinned this piece of paper here so that I can lift it up. 
at this point in the video, can I ask you, as always, if you're enjoying this video, could you please click that like button, that thumbs up? It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. If you can like, share, subscribe, or leave me a nice comment, that will help my channel to grow and I can teach more people how to paint and draw. And I hope you can see there, it's quite faint, but there's enough there that I'll be able to get my drawing onto my paper. And unlike graphite pencil, it's not gonna be left behind on show at the end. So here is my drawing transferred across. It's incredibly faint and delicate. It's not going to show at all at the end. And I'll probably at this stage go around in the charcoal pencil and just outline it a bit more clearly so I can see it better. Now, just to point out that uh, this tutorial is mostly to show you the materials and the techniques, but because it's a portrait and it's portrait shaped and video on YouTube has to be landscape shaped, it does mean that you're a little bit zoomed in, but I will put some pictures up so that you can see the whole portrait later on. Now, the most important thing when doing a portrait like this is not something you can generally do in watercolor, but if you're working in something like acrylics or oils or pastels and indeed charcoal, the first thing you want to do is block in the light and dark areas. So let's look at that first. So we've got the basics in here. You'll notice that I haven't gone crazy on the drawing. I haven't put a load of detail in, and that's really important with charcoal or indeed soft pastel because you'll just lose that detail later on. You have to put the details in at the end. What we want to do now is get some broad areas of light and dark in. I'm gonna be using some blending tools later on, but to start with, I'm just gonna use my fingers. I've got my cloth on hand so that I can clean my hands. And we're going to use the, uh, the charcoal and we can block it in on the side like this. So the background, if we look at the original picture, the background is the darkest thing here. So we're going to start blocking that in. Now, the danger, of course, at this point is that you can end up just losing your picture completely. So you've got to sort of balance out putting in these darker areas with preserving at least part of your drawing. I mean, I can go around the edge here and I can still see the hair, but the hair is fairly dark. So I'm going to start there and you see how it gets suddenly quite a bit lighter as I smudge with my fingers, as it starts to go in all the little dips in the paper. And we're just going to build up like this. So I'm going to build that darker and darker. I would start with possibly the darkest part of your picture and work out from there. You also find that once your fingers get dirty like this, you can start actually using them to draw with. Now, you don't want to do too much of that because you can, of course, have oil on your hands, but it is a, uh, a very effective thing to do. So I'm going to actually draw with the end of the stick now so that I can sort of delineate the hair from the background at this point. And I'm just building up those lights and darks. And again, coming into the face and starting to get some tone in the face. We can also, of course, at this point, go in with the Conte and get some lighter areas too. The Conte is a bit harder, so beware of doing any very strong lines with it. In other words, don't use it on the point at this stage if you're looking for a soft blended area. And we can, again, we can just start getting those lights and darks building up on the face so at this stage I'm just going to go in and keep building up those areas and perhaps putting a little bit more detail on things like the brows keeping them very rough and ready at the moment because the only thing you need to do at this stage is get the lights and darks into the right areas we'll be putting all of the detail and the fine blending in later on so you can see at this stage, I've been looking at my photograph, I've been looking at where those lights and darks are, and I'm starting to build up now. Going in, as I said, really quite roughly and ready at this point. It's really important that you're just brave at this point. Try not to lose the initial details of your drawing, but really just go in and stick those lights and darks in. Everything will start to become a lot more refined later on. This is a medium that you really need to get your hands into. So if it's starting to look a bit rough and ready at this point, what we need is some blending. And there are lots of options for blending tools. So let's go through those now and I'll show you how to use them too. So that first stage is out of the way. I've cleaned my hands a little bit. And now we're gonna look at refining this picture because obviously at the moment it's very rough and ready. You're gonna find you get some dust on the paper. So what you can do is um, either you can sweep away like this that will leave some marks this is a very soft makeup brush 
The other thing that's the best thing to do actually if I wasn't filming that I would do is to lift this up and just tap it over a bin. You do not want to get into the habit of blowing either pastel or charcoal dust. It's very, very bad for the lungs and it'll just get everywhere. So I suggest that you tap it over a bin and then bring it back to where you are working instead. So let's look at blending tools. So the simplest one you can use is a piece of tissue like this. So this isn't the rough paper that I was using before. This is actually a cosmetic tissue and we can get a much smoother blend with this. You need to keep moving it around, of course, unless you actually want to transfer from one area to another, in which case it can be quite effective. So see how this blends much more smoothly. What about if I want to blend in a very specific fine edge? Then I've got this. This is a torsion, which is a, uh, a roll of compressed paper, and you can buy these quite cheaply. And you can take, they've got a point, so you can go, you know, right up to the edge of areas, and we can blend things across almost like we're drawing with a pencil and get them really, really neat and tidy. Another thing that's great for blending is a brush like this. So this is an acrylics brush, and again, this is a fairly big one, but you can go down to a smaller size. I've got one here that's um, got more of a point. You can use a watercolor brush. Generally, the acrylic brushes just have a little bit of a stiffer bristle to them, and so they can move things more effectively. You can also use an eraser. So this is the eraser that I've got. This is one of these quite hard plasticky ones like you get in those kids' drawing sets. And this will actually, you know, lift and um, move highlights. You can use a soft putty rubber as well, but I do find that these harder ones are actually quite effective. This is actually a clear color eraser. It's just that it's black because I keep it in with my charcoal and I only use it for that. Of course, if you're going to be blending a white area like this, you'll want to get another clean brush for doing that. So what I'm going to do now is start really working up the blending and getting everything looking a bit smoother and a bit more refined. So I've mostly used the cosmetic tissue for blending at this point because we're just blending broad areas here. I'm going to save those finer blending tools for when I put the, uh, the details on at the end. So I'm just going in here and you know finding a clean-ish place on the tissue and just blending in like this. And you see that we start to build up these areas of lights and darks. Gives the face this lovely sort of luminosity and makes it look a bit more opaque. I've also added more darks where I need them and I'm starting to build up a real idea of where everything is. If you're ever in any danger of you know, losing a certain edge, you can go back in with your charcoal or your Conte or your charcoal pencil and just redefine those edges. But you want to try not to make it look too outliney because we're going for that soft, naturalistic look. And that's what I'm doing at this blending stage. So very important with something like soft pastels or indeed the charcoal that we're using today that you leave all of the fine details to the end and this is because they can become smudged so easily during the drawing process. So we're going to finish our portrait now by adding fine details and highlights. So I've got to the end of the section where I'm doing the main part of the blending and now I'm going to put fine details in. So you can see that what I've done here is I've started just blocking in those areas of light and shade and this is where observation is really key. Look at the chin here, look how we have the shadow and yet it's darker underneath and we have this line of light hitting the chin at the base there. And you can see I've placed this in here. Otherwise it would be impossible to see the difference between the chin and the neck which are both darks. So you have this area of light so this is when it becomes important to really observe what's going on. Now having worked across the whole area and a lot of the time I've been using my stick on the side, I've been blending with a tissue. Don't do too much blending with your fingers, just the initial little bits because of the oil in your hands. Now I need to work on each individual area because it's smudgy so easily that I'm going to actually need to go in now and do one part at a time. And at this point, I'll be going in with um, my charcoal pencil. Don't be afraid to snap your charcoal as well so you get a really fine point on it where you need to. I'll also be using my white Conte for highlights and using more precise blending tools. So, you know, I'll start looking at the hair and I'll start thinking about where those areas of dark and light really are and start getting those details in. Always good with hair to actually follow the line of hair growth. And then I'll be smudging in only where I need to. I can use my torsion 
These are quite handy when you need to go up to the edge of an area, but actually for soft blending like this, I do prefer using a brush. So I'm going to take that blending in like that. And I can also get things like, you know, there are little hairs sticking out in the background here that are hitting the light. I can get those individually like that. See how I've lent in my work here and it's all smudged across. So at this point, it's really important that we're, we're finalizing, trying really hard to keep our hands off the paper. If you're right-handed like me, then top left and working across and down is the way to go and vice versa if you're left-handed. And at this stage, I'll be going in and really, really refining every area with the brows, for example, we'll be going in and really getting every little brow hair showing. I'll be going really, really dark in these irises here and putting some white highlights in on top with the Conte. So those very, very fine lines, they should be the last ones that you do. So it's time now to go across your whole drawing very, very carefully and start putting in those details, blending where you need to and leaving finished marks where you need to as well. So really happy with the result. I've got to the point where I feel like if I carry on, I'll be overworking it. I haven't spent perhaps as much time as I would have done if it weren't just a, a YouTube tutorial. Now I'll move it up a little bit so you can see the bottom and you can see that I've kept the earrings and the, uh, and the dress, you know, very, very sketchy really. As with all portraits, the most focus should be on the face. I'll drop a photograph in now so that you can see the entire portrait completely flat with everything showing. Do let me know in the comments if you have had a go at charcoal drawing or perhaps you're going to give it a go now. It's really great fun and very fast to do as well. I do have some videos coming up later this year on acrylics and also some more watercolor pencils. So let me know if there's anything else that you would like to see as well. Before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. There are references to everything I've talked about here, including lots of free downloadables that you can grab. I've got free downloadable PDFs. I even have a free watercolor course that you can take. If you're interested in learning more about how to do the grid technique that I talked about earlier on in this video, about how to scale up using a grid, I've got a video that will take you through the entire process step by step. You can watch that video right now.